Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm in the warmest and sunniest part of the UK. I'm in Essex in South End on Sea. Now once again, unfortunately, this has been voted at the bottom for seaside towns in the country. Although there needs to be a slight adjustment to that because South End is now a city. So let's go and check out the city by the sea. We'll check out the longest pleasure pier in the world. We'll have a walk along the famous seafront and we'll also check out the Queen's Baton Relay that's in the city too. So it's a gorgeous day in South End and we're starting here just at the, the very end of the seafront. So you might be able to tell me in the comments why you think South End is again at the bottom of the list. So there is South End Pier, it stretches out over a mile into the Thames estuary and when you come to South End the beach is alright. It's actually segregated in different parts with different names for the beaches even though it is one kind of long beach, one this side of Adventure Island and then one the other. But as we take a look down there, you can see the sea, but obviously then this is the opening to the Thames estuary. So people do go swimming in here. I don't know whether it's got the blue flag this year. We'll find out actually. I think it might do. And there's one thing that South End doesn't really have, and you'll probably notice it. There is a distinctive lack of beach huts. So I'm just behind the Sea Life Aquarium. This area here actually does remind me of Hunstanton. If you've been to Hunstanton, You'll know what I mean as the sea wall and seafront goes down there past the Sea Life Aquarium. Not to get confused with the Sea Life Centre. I'm sure there is a difference. And some of the amusements that you'll get on the seafront in South End are really retro. I'm surprised they're not open yet. It's just after 11 o'clock on one of the warmest days of the year and they're not open. I'm sure I saw them open yesterday. Well, I think they're about to be open. That's uh, Fantasia Amusements Retro, or what? Where fish and chips rule. Look at the signage here for the uh, Britannia. Maybe I should do a bit of a fish and chip review from in there. So this is quite sad to see. A magnificent building on the seafront, but no longer used. This used to be a pretty big amusement park back in the day. Very grand building, and it literally goes all the way around the side. In fact, the only building that's kind of in this complex now is a Tesco down there. There used to be a big casino around the other side. Like I say, it used to be an amusement park. There was also a soft play area, a bowling alley. Looks a bit sorry for itself now, doesn't it? The magic returns. Let's hope so. Maybe one day it will. One thing about South End Seafront, it's ridiculously busy with traffic. And I was talking about the Seaside Award. They do have the Seaside Award. These look pretty good at night. This is known as um, Jubilee Beach. Like I say, they've all got different names. City Beach is over there. But the beach in South End isn't the best. It's pretty much like walking on a, on a building site, really, with the, the gravel. It's not really shingle, it's more like gravel and sand. Not overly that nice four pound all day cheaper than going abroad and get your deck chair <laughs> the tide is actually going out at the moment you can see adventure island just there in the middle also a famous hotel in south end which we'll come to in a moment let's continue down the seafront obviously we'll go and walk on the uh, the world's biggest pleasure pier so this is all redone back in 2002 I guess this is supposed to be an outside music area or something, but I've never really seen anything happen on here. You've got some fountains for the kids to cool off, especially on a, a hot day like today. And look at those retro amusements, the Hippodrome. I absolutely love that. Like most seaside towns, actually, the pandemic has had a massive impact on a lot of businesses closing. Never actually seen that lit up. The Las Vegas grill to get your fish and chips. So last time I was here, this was open. Now shut down for good. Poor old Wimpy. Bringing back my childhood memories. 
there's not many places now where you can go and get a fast food burger on a plate. I did like their sauce. Another fish and chip shop there with some illuminations on the front. Again, I've never seen that lit up for years. So I've actually just noticed that the Queen's Baton Relay is passing through South End today. And I believe it's, it's happening now. It's obviously travelled all the way through the Commonwealth for the Commonwealth Games. Do we get a glimpse of it? Okay, so continuing on the seafront through what looked like beach huts. But nice places to sit. And actually on a hot day like this, nice and cool as well. And the beach is getting a little bit more busier now as the morning goes on. But this will be absolutely heaving later. So what I'll do is I'll have a walk through Adventure Island and then we'll just kind of come back around and head up towards the pier. People having an early morning drink, never too early in South End. Oh, the Monte Carlo amusements. Memories as a kid, trying to get these toys out of these grabbers and never being successful. These do look pretty cool at night and I'll show you South End at night later on in the video. If you've seen the movie Big, you'll know all about the Zoltar machine. Telling your fortune for a quid. You may have heard this, but Zoltar is here to tell you you can believe it. Give Zoltar more silver coins and I will give you a fortune. Your fortune. I've just put a pound in. Oh, here it is. All right, let's have a look. See what it says. The all-knowing, amazing Zoltar speaks. Kind of nervous. Your fortune. When you hear a new opportunity knocking, you must take it. The time for nerves about change is over. Watch what you'll buy this month. Don't rush into unnecessary purchases and look out for a dubious salesman. November is a lucky month. Well, I've just bought some new carpets <laughs> and it was a dodgy salesman, so I had to do it. I know, you probably say, what a waste of money tells me my lottery numbers on here as well I didn't know that so what's great about Adventure Island is its free entry I think it's one of the only few in the country actually which um, you can walk around for free but the theming in here is really good music's very loud so I've kind of got to keep talking and there's a big map here so you can see where everything is it's almost split into two parks although it's the same park really but and on a, on a day like this best place to be on a day like today, you wish you would get wet, but this doesn't get you wet at all. Good fun though. It's great that the park has all these little entertainment areas where stuff goes on throughout the summer. The kids are still at school, but this place is packed. Brilliant, look at this. Now that is retro. Hook a duck. It's fail safe, really. The kids will love it. They're about to go off the go. So, this is a little bit of a snapshot of Adventure Island. Obviously, it continues under the pier just there, but talking of the pier. Let's go for a walk on the longest pleasure pier in the world. So like the Olympia is getting a little bit of a facelift. See, it is sad to see so many shops closed. I remember when these all used to be open, it used to be pretty busy up here. So I don't know if you can see it, there's the Queen's Baton. Just passing through at the moment, probably going to miss it. Good hotel to stay in, mix of views, but an amazing view over South End. So it's pretty busy at South End today, as you'll see in a minute, because of the uh, Queen's Baton relay that's going through.
I can hear them singing a song about Southend on Sea. <laughs> if you want to get a good photo of Southend Pier, up here is a great place to do it. All you have to do is literally just walk around here. There you go, you can see the mayor of the city of Southend just there doing his bit. It's got quite an amazing view from up here because you can see all the way down to Shrubiness. You see the pier and then a fantasy island. I'm going to show you a beach down there that is a little bit smelly and we'll talk about why that could be in a little bit. Why is it in the UK we get these flipping humongous bugs, like big black things? So it's been a while since I've been on the pier. In fact, the last time I was here was a couple of years ago as the price gone up like everything else. And the longest pleasure pier in the world. It's got to be walked if you're able to. If not, there's a train that runs all the way down the pier. So I think you pay obviously to get onto the pier and then you pay extra for the train. Or you can do a combination of walking and training, which I think I will do. So £5.30 there, £5.80 for a return. What's great about Adventure Island, you can see just there, there's these like little mini coasters that are perfect for little kids that want to have that thrill of riding a coaster, but they're not big enough or tall enough. Hey mate, can I walk up and get the train back? Yeah, sure. How much is that? For an adult, it's 5 and 30. Okay. So before you get onto the pier, you've got to walk over the road and over Adventure Island. So here we go. It's probably not the best day to do this walk. Well, it is because of the weather, but it's very, very warm. I think it's about 27 degrees. As you can see, it's really quiet on the pier. It's literally just us. You can see the train. Hopefully, I will get up to the pier or the end of the pier in time to get the train back. Otherwise, I have to wait half an hour, every half an hour for the train to come back. But you can just see how quickly the tide comes in and out of Southend. The water's ultra clear. So right now we're a third of a mile from the shore. We're not even halfway yet. So the pier opened up back in 1890 and stretches out 2,158 metres, being the longest pleasure pier in the world. So the walk itself takes around about 25 minutes. I'm trying to do it in 20 by walking really fast. And all the way along the pier you've got these seats which is quite handy to get out of the wind. But always check the weather because you can get caught out walking up here. If it's going to start raining, you have to kind of run to one of these shelters, but at least there's a, a few of them dotted around. Please tell me we're almost there. Well, I'm actually halfway now, so about another 10, 15 minutes to go. But surprisingly, the water is very shallow. Obviously you could probably, I would think, just about stand up in that and your head would be poking out the water. It's not advisable to jump from the pier for that very reason. Well, this is new. I'm not quite sure what they're doing here, but there's this one and there's that one over there. Maybe they're building a new station. I'm not quite sure. So if you've never been to the end of South End Pier, well, go and check it out, see what's here. It might be a very warm day, but it's really cool out here actually on the water. I love that bits of the train that you can actually just sit in whilst waiting for the actual train <laughs> at the actual station. 15 minutes past the hour and 45 minutes past the hour the train goes so we're gonna have to be a little bit quick. So just in this entrance to the pier you've got loads of little beach huts that do fish and chips and burgers. How cool are these? I was talking about the lack of beach huts in South End, but there is some on the pier. I let you can go in the train. Cool. That's a bit too warm to come in on a day like today. And some of you may remember a TV show. I don't know whether he still does it, but Jamie Oliver's Friday night show was done in here. Quite a few Hollywood celebs as well. See the man himself there with a whole host of celebrities. Look at the people that have been in here. Danny DeVito, Craig David. 
I wonder who sits in that chair. Someone famous, no doubt. We're not at the end of the pier just yet. I'll get to that point in a minute. But up here, you've got uh, South End RNLI. And I will go and show you the bell that you must go and visit as well at the end of South End Pier. So even though the sign is here, it's not actually quite the end, but there you go, look, 1.33 miles out to sea, 7,080 feet. As always, places for fishermen to do their thing right at the end. Cafe up there. There's not many piers that have adventure golf on the end of them. You'd worry about the ball going everywhere, wouldn't you? So paddle steamers used to bring people to South End from the end of the pier and in fact you can still get boat trips from here as well look at these jet skis out today i'd love to be doing that right now just a little bit jealous those jet skis have got big speakers as well so music blasting out he's just showing off now so let's have a walk up on the top deck because you get a great view of the rest of the pier from up here. Don't know if you can see, but for some reason, a lot of people have started to etch their names in the side of this lifeboat station. But let's go to the very tip. To see the bell. Look at the color of the water. And there you go, you can see the city of South End in front of us. Look at this. There is even a post box on the pier. Although, is it real? I don't think. I wouldn't put any posts in there just in case. I've got no collection on it. So I guess it's just waiting for the train to head back to the shore now. I would not want to sit in here to be honest because this is probably absolutely stifling hot. I think I'll just wait here on the platform. I think I can see the train coming in the distance. And sounds silly, but if you are getting the train back, just remember the train is here, not here. The amount of people that have actually got in and thought, all right, yeah, the train's here. I'll just sit and wait for the train. They'll be waiting a long while because this train doesn't go anywhere. You can see why it gets confusing though. Not to get confused because the real train is turning up here. And obviously the driver then gets from the front of the train into the rear to take it back. Roomy. <sighs> so the walk down is about 25 minutes. The journey back is a little bit quicker. It takes about 10 minutes on the train. I was wondering actually, but they check your tickets on the way out, so you can't exactly cheat it. But always as a, as a gift shop as you go out. Let's head back down the seafront, because I just want to show you a really nice beach, especially if you've got kids. So this is known as Three Shells Lagoon. It's a tiny little beach, a little play park as well, and a tidal pool. And when the tidal pool drains, it does smell, and you actually see what's on the bottom of this. So. It's up to you if you want to let your kids come in here, but I think personally it's a little bit disgusting. Look at it. Yikes. Yeah, I can't say I'd want my kids to be swimming in here, but people do let the kids come in here. It really is smelly, sludgy underfoot, and look at the mess in there. 
I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments, but someone told me once before that this has something to do with Jamie Oliver or a relation to Jamie Oliver, I'm not sure. Decking for the three shell customers, look. Let's have a look up here. Wow, this is nice. Nice place to come and sit, although no one's really sat up here today, which is quite a surprise. There's not too many beach huts, but at least the toilets look like beach huts. I'll tell you what, the palm trees down here are looking a lot better than they have done in previous years. And this has been out of operation for many years. Glad to see it back open again. The cliff lift here in South End. How much is it? Look at that. The Vinicular Railway here in South End is 50 pence per ride. Now the only problem is, is that I can't go up because I haven't got any money. Dating back to 1912 and has been beautifully restored. It still does serve a purpose because these steps are blooming tiring to go up. But it's more now of a novelty. I still love South End. Why is it at the bottom of the list? I'll never know. You might be able to tell me in the comments. If you want to see South End at night, click this video here. Do give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.